So looking at other key categories, whilst there is nothing new about fashion houses developing their own branded fragrances, what is new is luxury fashion houses ramping up exposure across the full beauty care remit to include products such as nail polish, lipstick, eye and facial makeup, body lotions, self tanners and even bath and shower products. We have recently seen the likes of Marc Jacobs, Michael Kors, Tom Ford, Tory Burch and Giorgio Mani teaming up with big name beauty care products to set out their own store, whilst others like the likes of Burberry have adopted a more independent strategy. One way or other, almost all the industry leading players are looking for a bigger piece of action. Mark Jacobs has gone as far as opening his own Manhattan-based store dedicated solely to cosmetics and fragrances. And this October, Tom Ford launches his men's cosmetics line. But probably one of the most interesting categories of all is second largest category, luxury jewelry and timepieces, which has been on course for a radical shakeup as leading manufacturers of soft luxury goods, such as clothing and footwear, diversify into hard luxury to capitalize on untapped opportunity. Both Louis Vuitton and Versace have recently moved into this area, launching their own branded high jewellery collection, with Louis Vuitton going as far as opening their own standalone jewellery store in Paris's Place Vendôme. Interestingly, products positioned at top tier price points have shown greater insulation from economic turbulence. Luxury jewellery and timepieces in particular have benefited further due to the perception that hard luxury goods typically retains value over time and are therefore regarded as a safe haven for consumers. So looking at those categories that have possibly not performed so well, luxury wines and spirits are currently finding it tough to find new consumers. This has mainly been due to an aging population in Western Europe, but also due to problems within operating environments within a number of the key emerging markets. In particular, the clampdown on luxury consumption in China which is undermining demand in high-end restaurants and putting a squeeze on corporate gift giving. In other markets, notably Brazil, Russia, India, Argentina, Turkey and Indonesia, depreciating local currencies are also pushing up prices and constricting the consumer base. Moving forward, there is an urgent need for multinational drinks companies to find new ways to tempt new consumers. A current demand for affordable luxury is possibly a platform for new ideas. So what are our future predictions? Euromonitor International forecasts that by 2018, the USA, with 34 million high income earners and a projected retail value of 90 billion US dollars, will continue to lead the world in total value sales of luxury goods, followed by, of course, China. However, consumers with fast growing populations of high earners such as India, Malaysia, Indonesia, Mexico and Brazil will present the greatest opportunity for business and brands offering luxury goods and services. We're also keeping a very close eye on Nigeria at the moment as the possible next big growth frontier for luxury goods. It may be very hard to believe that a country where most of the people live on less than $2 a day could be one of the fastest growing markets in the world for French champagne and digital television. Yet, Nigeria, Africa's most populous country, is just a place where the pursuit of wealth has become even a religion.